What's up, Magical Misfits? Drew here, and today I want to talk about one of my favorite topics, crystals. I'm starting with kyanite. Kyanite forms in elongated, flat, blade-like crystals. You're typically going to find specimens in the color blue, indigo, green, and black, though you can find white, pink, yellow, gray, and orange if you look hard enough. Kyanite is a self-cleansing stone. Now, what does this mean? I did a video where I talked about crystal care and whether or not we need to cleanse our crystals. That's a whole other video. But as far as kyanite is concerned, it does not hold any energies other than its own. It, they just don't stick. So it never needs to be cleansed. And it can actually be of benefit when clearing and cleansing other crystals. So we're going to start off with kyanite in general, properties that kind of encompass any color. So kyanite facilitates meditation, stimulates psychic ability and intuition. It assists connection to guides and higher guidance. It instills a spiritual integrity. It aligns the chakras and the subtle bodies, encourages communication and self-expression, and it facilitates integration for a sense of wholeness. I'll be starting with blue kyanite. Of course, all the properties mentioned before apply to each color, but specifically I'll go into the properties of each. Now this, I feel, is the stone that is most readily available in most metaphysical, spiritual, witchy, what have you type stores. It is a fragile stone. The blue kyanite, I would say, is the most fragile of all of the colors that I personally possess. Blue kyanite aids in lucid dreaming, and it facilitates a full consciousness during astral and dreaming. Now this requires some effort on our part. If we work with it in this manner, eventually it can help us have a full sense of consciousness during both dreaming and astral work. Next is green. Now this is a much more stable specimen and you can see that it is kind of translucent, unlike blue kyanite, which is opaque and fragile. So it is a bit different. This is much more crystal-like to me, um, as far as like quartz, that kind of thing. Green kyanite is very heavily, strongly connected with nature and the natural realm. So it is great at facilitating a connection between, you know, well, Gaia, um, the green man, but divic energy of plants, um, also animal energy, connecting with the fey, the elementals, that kind of thing. It brings a great sense of stability. It also facilitates going with the flow, following and adapting to and just flowing with the natural ebb and flow of the universe and of the natural world. It helps us connect with our heart's truth, our heart's knowing and act upon that. And it is said to enhance dreams. Next is black kyanite. It is very similar to the blue kyanite in its fragility, although it is more substantial. It is much harder to break and hurt. It is not as fragile. And I typically find them in these sort of feathery blade-like formations when I see them. Black kyanite is very effective at clearing blocked chakras. And it is both grounding and energizing at the same time. It can help us clear imbalances within ourselves and it's a very effective tool for tapping into interdimensional consciousness, which makes it a great ally when it comes to past life and alternative life work. Next specimen is indigo kyanite. And this is kind of similar to green kyanite and its, its structure is very stable. You know, while it is more opaque than translucent, it still has a very sort of crystal-like structure, more so like a quartz or something of that nature. Indigo kyanite stimulates the psychic centers. It facilitates lucid dreaming and astral travel. It is a stone that is said to help us see the truth in any given situation. So we can cut right through the BS and we can see a person's true intentions or their true personality, their motivations and things of that nature. Indigo kyanite is said to be a stone that helps us work through disagreements and helps us repair damaged relationships. Lastly for kyanite is orange kyanite. And my specimen looks kind of like a dagger 
think you could hurt somebody with it. It is like the happy medium of blue and indigo and green. It is in between the two. More fragile than the indigo and the green, but less so than the blue. Orange kyanite is a stone of transformation. It is a stone that puts us in a place of self-reflection through meditation, which can stimulate healing and growth. It is said to be a great catalyst for healing and change, a powerful manifester. It activates the sacral chakra and clears any energies or attachments that we have impeding that chakra so that we can grow and change and move beyond. And as a result, it stimulates creativity. The next stone I wish to discuss is amber. And of course, amber is not actually a mineral. It is fossilized natural resin. Now, just a little interesting tidbit. The Greeks called amber electron, E-L-E-K-T-R-O-N. And that was in reference to the sun. We derived the word electricity, the, um, the English language derived the word electricity from that word electron. And the reason that I think that's cool is because amber develops an electric charge when it's rubbed. So amber comes in a variety of colors, typically going to find yellow, brown, or reddish brown, and is often translucent. But of course, this piece is much more opaque and closer to, it's a very dark brown, almost a black. And there are some specimens that are a yellow green color. You can find amber that has inclusions. Uh, this one has little bugs in it, but it can be quite pricey when it has the little bugs or lizards or whatever in it. Sort of the creme de la creme of amber would be Baltic amber. It is the most sought after and highly valued. Baltic amber formed between 30 and 60 million years ago, and it formed from coniferous trees, which essentially is a pine tree. Any tree, any variety that has cones is coniferous. So pine tree sap is amber. It's just millions of years old. Amber has a very gentle, soothing energy, and more than anything else, it is a stone of purification. It is a stone for clearing and cleansing. Not only can it clear our environment and our chakras, but it has been used throughout history to draw illness out. It absorbs disharmony, anything that is disharmonious to us and actually transmutes it and turns it into something useful and beautiful and puts it back out into the world. It is tied to our will and drive and helps us reach our goals and actually achieve things, especially if we're procrastinators. It is a great stone for protection, particularly when it comes to journey and the astral plane. It is said to be a stone of luck to bring good fortune and it is a great stone when it comes to past life work as far as clearing karmic debris and ancestral work as far as clearing familial patterns. So any of these behavioral or psychological issues that are passed from generation to generation, emotional damage, that kind of thing, it can help us clear those patterns so that we don't continue to pass them on to the future generations. It's a very grounding stone. And the first thing that I always think of when it comes to amber is its ability to be uplifting. Amber is a stone that is said to help us counteract depression. And particularly when we're talking about seasonal affective disorder, when we get depressed because the sun is, has a, a shorter time in the sky um, in the winter months, essentially. This next specimen is called crackled fire agate, although I call it fire crackle agate. Um, it's very beautiful. Mine has a, a little hanging on because I like to wear it and I will explain why. I don't wear it all the time, but I do wear it from time to time and I will tell you why as I go through the properties. This is not a super well-known or um, well-used, talked about 
um, stone. You're not going to find a whole lot of literature and information on it typically. But it is powerfully attuned to the will and helps us with our willpower and manifesting through our will. It activates the root and sacral chakra and this stimulates vitality and creativity. But the reason, the premier reason why I love this stone, it is a powerful stone of protection. I can tell you how many times I have been happy to have this stone as an ally. Now what it does is, it's the coolest thing. If you feel like you just have the feeling that somebody is sending you bad mojo. So this could be something that they're doing consciously. They could be doing spell work or just even doing things in the practical world to mess you up. Practical things in the real world. Um, or if they're just sending you the evil eye, just thinking dirty things about you and giving you stink eye when you walk by. Anything either consciously or unconsciously that someone is directing at you, this stone will put up a barrier to protect you, but it will also send that back to the person that it originated from so that they can learn a lesson. They can see how what they were doing was not good. Um, it's supposed to do so in a sort of gentle manner. It's not like um, you're trying to harm them. You're just hoping that they learn not to do what it is they're doing and you are protected. Um, so this is like, yeah, anytime any, anything feels off, I feel any kind of weird energy or, you know, whether I know I've actually had a falling out with someone or it just feels like something's off, I will put this on. And there have been many times that this has been a powerful ally for me. And then I have had actual evidence of it. Um, protecting me and helping me. This is I, this is one of my favorites and it is one that I always recommend when people are talking about protection. The next stone is Lepidolite, Lepidolite, however you want to pronounce that. Okay, and this often occurs with other lithium bearing minerals. So for instance, this is Lepidolite and it has a rod of pink tourmaline running through it. And this one also, this is quartz with Lepidolite here in mica and then pink tourmaline. They grow in conjunction together quite a bit. Now you're often going to find this mineral in shades of pink or purple, different shades of purple, though it can come in a grayish white or even clear color. So speaking of colors, you know, I have this, this is Lepidolite and it's almost a red purple color. And then there's this very purpley, very sort of periwink periwinkle almost. And then I have this one that's kind of in between those two. Now this is Lepidolite in mica form and its properties are said to be greatly enhanced when it is in mica. And I just think it's beautiful when it's in this form. Lepidolite is a stone that is strongly tied to the emotions and the emotional body. It has a high lithium content and like all stones that do, it is said to be a mood stabilizer to help us with mood swings. It helps us reduce stress and depression. Um, it's what is referred to as a crisis stone. It is great for calming frayed nerves and bringing a sense of peace. It's a stone that dispels disharmony and it is said to align us with the highest good so that we may act in ways that are in our highest good. It clears electromagnetic pollution, electromagnetic waves from computers and televisions and phones and even the electrical wiring that runs through the walls in your home. It can help clear and dispel that and keep it from affecting us. It clears the chakras, uh, particularly the crown, third eye and throat. It helps us release outdated patterns so that we may change and grow. It also helps us release past emotional traumas for the same reason. This is a stone that helps us find the small everyday pleasures. Next, we have Damborite. These crystals are generally four-sided and their termination is chiseled shape. So like, this is my large specimen, but here, this is one side 
and then this is another side, and then this is another side, and this is another side. You can see they come to like a little point. You can see how there's a, a point sort of on each side. That's because you know, here's a point, that's a side, there's another side, another side, there's four sides, if that was clear at all. And then the termination here, instead of being like a point, it's actually, I don't know if I'm going to be able to show you, oh, look, it's actually sort of flat because it looks like quartz otherwise. Like here's a typical specimen that you're going to see. But you can see that there's a flat face on it. You're most often going to find it in clear, but it also can be found in a sort of what is described as a wine yellow color, pale pink or lilac, and this one is a pale pink. And you're typically going to find smaller specimens. I mean, this is kind of small. They, they get, you can find ones that are larger than this one easily, but you're not typically going to find one this big. Um, they're out there, obviously, but they're not something you're going to walk upon every day. Damborite helps us tune into higher consciousness and inner guidance. It aligns us with our heart's truth and knowing. This is a stone that can facilitate massive change and the ability to leave the past behind and move forward. It stimulates the third eye crown and all of the upper chakras, the ethereal chakras above the head. If you believe in or work with angels, this is a good stone for you because it helps us connect to that angelic realm. It is another stone that helps relieve stress and worry and it brings a feeling of joy. This is a stone of peace. That's the energy it carries. And it is also a great stone for channeling, bringing information from a higher source down into the earth plane to be used. Okay guys, that's all the crystals I'm talking about today. As always, thank you for hanging out and listening to me talk about the things that I love. And until next time, much love and gratitude.